Hello YouTube, this is Morgan Airspeed Prime here with my next Avatar news update video. Getting this one in right at the end of uh, Christmas Day today. Um, just a few little things that uh, came up here. So first up is what seems to be maybe most of, maybe all of Wave 2 of the McFarlane uh, 5 inch line, so the smaller scale figures. Um, so we'll go into the pictures in a little bit more detail, but what I've found so far is basically Avatar State Ang, Iroh, and Toph. That's all I've seen so far. I haven't seen any new listings for the 7 inch figures, and I haven't seen any new sort of like uh, deluxe figures or animal figures yet. But again, they literally just went up over the last few days. So let's go through this. The Ang, for the most part, is a remold here, except for the head and hands have the Avatar State uh, stuff going on. So you can see a uh, white arrow, white eyes, white arrows on his hands as well. He comes with the glider staff and otherwise is the standard Book One Ang figure as we know it. A little bit boring here, but they're going to get their uh, use out of the Ang mold that they have and this seems all right. I wish it came with a different accessory at the very least to make it feel a bit more different than the all already the two Angs at this scale felt a little dull. Uh, here it is in package, just so you can see what exactly it's they're going for. I don't see anything different with the sculpting outside of the fact that the head is different. Um, cool, but uh, it's a very obvious repaint and not particularly exciting. Next up, Uncle Iroh. So this is a little bit in, more interesting. Wave 2, they're going to Iroh. Some of the other figure lines are taking a lot longer to get there. Especially when Diamond Select are starting off with like Book 2 Iroh. It's nice to see them go for the sort of uh, kind of classic Iroh look here. So, um, interesting. Um, obviously, you know, he's a, he's a different sort of size of figure. Uh, he has a different build, so that makes him a little bit more unique. They go for the lightning effect part that sort of wraps around his hand. So that's kind of cool. Uh, I do like that. Uh, the head sculpt, I think, seems pretty good. We'll go through some some of the other pictures here to get a sense for, you know, some of the articulation. You know, you can, you can see what they're going for here with the different hands that they have on him. And the, the head sculpt, I think, seems all right. There's a side view. There's a view from the back, the other side, another view there. Uh, and here's the in-package look. Um, I think that's a pretty nice middle-of-the-road head sculpt that's not trying to do anything too crazy. Looks okay and seems like a, you know, for this scale, nicely sized figure. Um, and I'm glad they're doing Iroh quite early on. Again, the, uh, this website saying like early January, sorry, uh, late January, like early 2022. Uh, and then last figure I've seen is Toph, who I think outside of the head seems all right, but I think they haven't quite got the way they're doing the kind of hair covering her face. And I think they've got her face a little bit weird here. This has a little bit of the feel of a Diamond Select Book 3 Zuko from the first wave, where I think they made the, the hair come down a little bit too much over his head to the point where it looked weird. And I think they're giving Toph that look as well. I like the effect part. I think that's a really cool thing to actually like, it has nothing to do with like her hands. It's just a piece that you put in front of her because that fits for earthbending. That seems to be the way the way to go for it. But you can sort of see here the problem is that like t this is Toph's hairstyle. It does cover her face in a lot of cases, but you can definitely tell behind it that the sculpt isn't fantastic uh, in terms of being really accurate. And in general, this this has probably been one of the best lines for like how the faces actually look outside of maybe the Sokka from Wave 1. There's the side profile view, there's the behind look, the other side profile view. Here's another look and you can sort of see like, okay, like it, it is quite heavily obscuring her face. Um, it's one of those ones where like you maybe wish they'd maybe just held back on it just a little bit to make the face a little clearer. Because it feels like they're hiding kind of what her face is actually meant to look like. But um, uh, it could look better in person. I just, 
my initial reaction to seeing this was that I'm not sure about that at all. Not really sure. Like the effect part, it's probably one of the cooler uh, earth effect parts. The general look seems quite good as well. And so that is good to see. Um, but yeah, that's really all there is to say there. Like I said, I'm guessing we might see more about this McFarlane stuff as we go forward to see if they are doing like another animal size figure like a dragon or something uh, that would be cool I hope Appa isn't the only kind of figure at that size that they do but we'll move on the only other piece of news is this this is what seems to be the sort of official uh, announcement of patterns in time now you may be immediately going but wait patterns in time was basically announced by the listing on the Dark Horse website. What is this Comic Speed article about? Well, this is just how Dark Horse seems to do things, is that some publication gets the exclusive reveal and usually always something something beats the that publication to the news. The listing goes up first, we find out about it beforehand. In this case, we, we've known about this book for about a month. This was announced, I think, in around the 24th of November. We're now, you know, the 20, this was on the 23rd of December, so like two days ago. Um, they're officially announcing this. And again, it was a weird one because I talked in a few of my previous videos about how Patterns in Time, despite being, you know, officially announced on the Dark Horse website, had never been acknowledged by like the Dark Horse social media team. Whereas they had acknowledged the book for art book uh, reveal um, and so on. So, so there's some weirdness surrounding that where like they didn't have that up on their website. But then that article went up and then they were talking about that. But it took them a while to get around to this one and and so on. It really doesn't have too much extra information. Uh, it lists what seems to be maybe all of the creators. Um, and we'll go through that a little bit to see what's going on here. But... Uh, all you can see here is that, you know, they go through, it's to celebrate the 10 year anniversary. We, we sort of knew that basically this is going to be a, a bit of a marketing tagline. They attach to everything Cora related that's released next year is the 10 year anniversary. Um, sure, you can say the reason they're going ahead with this is because of the 10 year anniversary. But after Team Avatar Tales, something like this for Cora was always going to happen. So I don't know how much you can maybe specifically say it's exclusively planned for the anniversary. Um, because they were always going to do something like this because they have to collect the short the uh, free comics together. There's the official description. We've seen this before. This is from the previous article. No real description of what the actual comics are going to be about. Just mentioning that Korra, Sami Makabola, and Tenzin and more are in these comics. And then rounding out the announced creative lineup for the new anthology are Jade Aikasi, uh, Sam Beck, Heather Campbell, uh, Kaiju, uh, Alexandria uh, Monique, uh, Killian Ng, Rachel Silverstein, uh, and Victoria Ying. Uh, Sachin Tang provides the book's uh, cover artwork. Um, $12.99, it's 80 pages, uh, April 12th, 2022. So, uh, let's quickly cover uh, this. Sorry, I went back there for no reason at all. Um, the lineup of people, they, they also have up here, uh, Michael Dante DiMartino, Kiku Hughes, and Delilah S. Dawson. So, I have... These are the two free core free comics I have. I don't have a Lost Pets in physical copy, which is why I do actually want this book to include the reprints of uh, these two plus uh, the uh, Lost Pets as well. So let's let's cover uh, Friends for Life first. The creative team on Friends for Life is script by Michael Dante Di Martino, art by Heather Campbell, uh, and lettering by Michael Heisler. Now, for the most part, they don't tend to uh, overly highlight the letterers in these things. So you can see here, um, Michael Dante DiMartino, tick, and art by Heather Campbell, tick. Killian Ng does the colors on this book as well. So there's that. Uh, if we go over uh, this book here, the most recent one, we can see uh, Clearing the Air, script by Kiku Hughes. So that's uh, tick there. Art is by Sam Beck, so that's there. Killian Ng does the colors once again. 
uh, as and they also do the uh, cover art for this book as well. And then if you look of Lost Pets, the art is by Jade Eidkasi and the colors are by Killian Ng. So, you know, the creators are covered. These ones are covered here, uh, as are uh, these ones. So I guess the new stories in this uh, are going to be by Delilah S. Dawson. Um, Kaiju, Alexandria Monique, uh, Rachel Silverstein, uh, Victoria Ying. Um, and that sort of, I think, fits what will be the case. I think this book mo more than likely will be reprinting the books, these books, uh, and then the rest of it will be new stories. And again, I don't personally know a ton of comic artists, comic writers, and they're mixing creative teams across writers and um, artists here. So while there's a lot of people involved here, this could amount to only maybe like two creative teams or something like that. Uh, we don't know if some of the creators who have done books already will be coming back to do other new books and stuff like that. Because you know, Killian Ng has done like mul the colors on multiple books um, and so on. So I, I think there's too much of a kind of crossover between the names matching basically all three of the previous uh, free comics that they're not going to be in here. Even though it says um, the new anthology and then like, does it specifically say like all new, I think somewhere here, um, uh, you know, featured in stories crafted by the, the, the these all new stories. Um, I'm, I'm not sure, like, does that exclude the fact that they, they, they won't do this? That would be a bit weird, given that Team Avatar Tales did reprint all the free comics and then this one is not going to do that. I think the fact that every person listed in the creatives on the three free books means they have to be in here. Other than that, there's nothing to speculate about because they don't say anything about what the other books are going to be about. Uh, how does the, the patterns in time thing um, kind of uh, mean anything? Um, now that I'm looking at this again, it is the Patterns in Time, an anthology. That's a little bit different. Um, not sure uh, about what's going on there. Um, it, does that mean we'll maybe get more anthologies or, or what? Um, but I do appreciate that they're at least saying that on the books, that that probably should have been said on like Team Avatar Tales and so on, because it's the you know exact same format. But um, yeah, that, that's just the unfortunate thing about a lot of the announcements this year is that they have literally just been, this thing is coming. We're not going to tell you anything of note about it to get you speculating about it. Just here is this thing that exists. And that's been very frustrating just because you know, everything has been sort of exciting because of Avatar Studios, but then Avatar Studios is probably the reason why, why we're not being told much about these things. So it's a, a really weird way to do things. Um, obviously, my next sort of big video coming out in like about the next few days, uh, I'll try and get it out before the end of the year, is the 2022 uh, preview video. Uh, I haven't really started it yet, but I'm going to be starting it uh, shortly. But I'm just thinking about how I'm going to be doing that. And it's like, okay, look, merchandise stuff, pretty standard. We we have a sense for a lot, a lot of the stuff that is coming next year. But when it comes to talking about Avatar Studios and a lot of the new story content, it is pretty incredible how little we know about story content next year. It's really crazy how little we actually know about the the details of anything for next year. Um, and that is a really awful and awkward situation to be in given that the franchise should be going from strength to strength but we're going into one of the weaker years um, uh, by what it looks like so far so yeah in the comments let me know what your thoughts are on what seems to be wave two of the five inch figures uh, as well as I suppose the creator lineup for uh, patterns in time any thoughts on this? Are you familiar with any of these kind of uh, newer people that we haven't seen on Core books before? Uh, what do you think uh, they'll bring to um, some Korra stories? But uh, other than that, that's been the video. Thanks for watching and bye.